Hi everybody, this is Anne. Today I'm going to experiment with a pottery version of origami. Origami is the Japanese art of folding paper into decorative shapes. For our project today, the folding won't be as complex as traditional origami, but I'll show you how, with even simple folds in the clay, you can create imaginative forms. First I'll show you how to do an envelope fold using a simple square slab of clay. As I don't have a slab roller, I rolled my clay on a plastic pastry mat with a rolling pin between two quarter inch thick rulers. Once the clay was the right size, I ribbed it smooth on both sides. Jim created this square template for me that's nine and a half inches on all sides. I wanted to add texture to the piece, so I placed the template on the clay and lightly scored around it with a needle tool so I knew where to add the texture. I decided to use a special rolling pin that I designed and had laser cut by Sharon Hoppy Designs. I firmly pressed it into the clay as I rolled over the slab. Then I cut the square out completely and removed the extra clay. With a wet finger, I softened the edges. I needed to peel the clay off the mat without stretching it, so I sandwiched it between two mats, flipped it over, and gently peeled the top mat off like so. I wanted to find the center of the slab, so I used a straight edge from corner to corner each way. Where the two marks joined is the center. Next I took a plastic air packing rectangle and set it like this. So there's a corner at the bottom, and so I could see the center point of the slab through the bubble. I then folded the two edges over the bubble so the points of the clay met up with the center mark and touched each other. I then laid the edges down on the plastic so they stuck to it. This freed my hands so I could fold the bottom edge upward and slightly overlap the side edges. Now I scored and slipped them together. To strengthen the connection, I gently pressed the top edge downward and used a damp paintbrush to seal the seam. The goal is to keep it from looking overworked. Next I popped the air bubble and removed it. Whoops, the joint came apart just a little bit at the center, but that's an easy fix. Now I can get my fingers underneath the seam to firmly work the edges together. The center is the most vulnerable to cracking, so I add just a little clay under the three corners to prevent them from cracking apart. The edges of the pouch are still raw, so I use my wet finger to round and finish them. I want to give the envelope volume, so I slide two yellow sponges into the pouch, like so. The envelope will hang on the wall, so I find the center of the top flap and punch a hole in it. Here I use the top of a felt marker. I removed the sponges when it was leather hard, and here's what I came out with. I can see this hanging over a writing desk filled with special cards and letters. For the next project, I'll still use a square slab, but this time I'll combine the darting technique with a folding to create a bowl. One of my favorite measuring tools is a quilter square. It makes creating the template for this project easy. 
Jim was kind enough to cut this one out of poster board and add the 30 degree angle darts to each corner. First I gently scored the template over the clay. I wanted to add a rib matte texture to the inside, so I used flat sticks along the edge to mask the borders, and then pressed the mat down to the center using a pony roller and my fingers to get a good impression. I made sure to pick up the edges of the mat to make sure the texture was up to the edges before pulling the whole mat off. Now that's exactly what I wanted. Along the borders, I used the tops of these pins to create a crater texture. Now I lay the template back down and cut away the excess clay. I need to unstick the clay from the mat without stretching it, so I sandwich it with another mat and flip it carefully unsticking the clay. Now I'll use this form. It's a styrofoam half sphere that I've cut the bottom off of. To move the clay into the form, I placed a sheet of plastic wrap on top of the slab, sandwiched it with another mat, and flipped it back over. Carefully, I picked up the ends of the plastic wrap, centered it over the form, twisted the ends of the plastic wrap to pull the clay edges upward, then slid it into the form. I found it's best at this point to fold two opposite edges inward to overlap the other flaps so the clay will easily slide down into the mold. I then gently tap the form to the table to create a flat bottom. Then I scored and slipped the edges together, like so. I liked how the edges crossed over each other, but I had to make sure that they're even. Finally, I used my wet finger to round the inner edges like this. Then I softened all the sharp edges around the entire bowl. Now here's one I created the day before. It's dried to leather hard, and you can see that I carved a border to the outside and added more of the crater texture to it. This will be a great serving bowl for a festive table especially if you serve Doritos. Next, I wanted to show you that you don't have to start with a square. I'll create a triangle-shaped folded plate. I drew an equilateral triangle 10 inches on each side and cut it out. I rolled a slab and scored the edges of the triangle on the clay. I then added texture to the edges using this piece of lace. I replaced the template and made the cuts. I wanted to fold over the edges, so I measured two and a half inches on either side of each corner, then connected the two points. I measured one and a quarter inches along that line to find the center. I then used a straight edge from the point to the mark that I made and I cut along that line. I thought it needed a focal point, so for fun I impressed a little wooden bird cutout that I found to the center of the plate.
Once I was happy with that, I flipped the clay, unpeeled it, placed a piece of plastic wrap over it, and flipped it again. Before moving the slab, I separated the two edges by lifting one on each side like this. Now I picked up the plastic wrap and laid it down inside of a styrofoam half sphere, just like we did with the last project. I scored and slipped the edges together and sealed the seam. Here's the one I made the day before. I removed it from the form when it was leather hard, then folded the edges down just a little bit. If you have any suggestions about how to glaze this, put it in the comments below. Next, I wanted to show you that you don't have to use a symmetrical shape for the pattern. I'll make a planter from slab strips. For this project, I played around with a newspaper mock-up before committing to making a final poster board template. In the end, I cut out these two strips from a long slab. I'm using a carpet tube roll as the form for this project. I rolled the tube in plastic wrap so the clay won't stick to it. Then I set it upright. I then curled the first longer strip around the tube. When I got it in place, I scored and slipped it together. I then positioned the second strip in place and marked it. I scored and slipped it to the first strip. Note that there will be a gap where the two strips overlap. I then removed the carpet tube and twisted the plastic wrap to remove it from the clay. I decided I wanted this piece to be oval, so I pressed it with my hands like this. When I was happy with the shape, I used wet fingers to round the edges. I then began rolling out a slab for the bottom. I marked around the perimeter of the planter inside and out. I then scored and slipped both edges and stuck them together. I added a little coil to the inner seam for a good seal. Then I used my fingers to seal the clay from the outside. Next I cut the clay away flush with the walls to continue the sleek lines down to the very bottom. Now I used my finger to clean up the seams. The way the clay is folded creates an illusion that I used multiple strips instead of just two. Remember, folding is not just for hand building. You can create a folded project using wheel thrown pieces too. So I'll show you an easy vase project. I threw a tall, thin, gently curved vase on the wheel. I used my needle tool from the top to score the rim, angling it downward one revolution. I kept going around, digging the tool deeper into the clay until I cut it off.
I use my wet fingers to round the edges. I then cut another inch or so down the side, then folded the inner edge inward and under the longer edge. I folded the outer edge over that, then scored and slipped the two together. As the edge is vulnerable to cracking, I used an extra piece of clay to attach the two at the inner seam like this. I then curled the little pointed edge downward. I used my wet fingers to curl the edges of the vase so they undulated like I wanted. When I was happy with that, I thought it needed a focal point, so I cut a hole from the little curl on the end. Here's what I came up with. The added details along the rim give this vase an elegance that will add to a floral display. Whether you're a hand builder or a wheel thrower, applying the technique of folding the clay can add a whole new dimension to your projects. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.